thanks to the promise of one tyre being able to do everything, all season tyres, otherwise known as all weather tyres in North America, are a rapidly growing market segment. To find out which all season tyre is currently best, I bought nine of the best tyres available on the market, along with a summer and a winter tyre, which should allow us to see whether an all season tyre, or even the best all season tyre, really can do the job of two tyres, or whether it compromises in any area. We're going to start the testing here at Goodyear's amazing Arctic test facility in Lapland, where we're going to be doing snow testing. Then we'll move to the south of France, where we'll do dry, wet, noise, comfort, rolling resistance testing, which should allow us to work out which tyre works best where and whether all season tyres really are one tyre to do everything or a summer and winter tyre has advantages in certain areas. As always, I'm going to try and keep this video of watchable length, so if you want any more of the geeky data, I'll leave a link in the description to the Tire Reviews website where you can pour over all the data and dig into each category further. And before we start testing, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button because it'll allow me to keep on doing these rather expensive and time-consuming tests for many years to come. On test, we have the Bridgestone Weather Control A005, the Continental All Season Contact, the Cooper Discoverer All Season, the GT GT All Season, the brand new Goodyear Vector Four Seasons Generation 3, the Hankook Kinergy 4S2, everyone's favourite Michelin Cross Climate Plus, the Nexon N Blue Four Season, the Redstone Quattrack Pro, and the summer and winter tyre represented by the brand new Goodyear Efficient Grip Performance 2 and the Goodyear Ultra Grip Performance Plus. Right, first test of the day is snow handling, and before you say it, I know snow handling isn't strictly the most relevant test for the UK climate because when it does snow, we're hardly going out there and setting lap times, but snow handling is a very valid test for two reasons. Firstly, not all my viewers are from the UK. There's some European and North American audience, which means snow handling is actually quite an important test for them because they do go out and drive at reasonable speeds in the snow. And secondly, probably more importantly for the UK market, snow handling gives you an idea of how the tire works during sort of transient or emergency situations. So if something steps out or someone pulls out on you and you have to brake and turn, it shows you how much grip or how much ability the tire is going to give the car. The best on test in the snow handling was surprisingly the cheapest tire, it was the GT. Now this tire felt the most winter-like and it was quite a joy to drive. It gave the car good balance, a little bit of oversteer, but generally find that as the front axle grip gets better, the car ends up with a bit more oversteer just because the rear's carrying more speed and it comes around a little bit more, but fair play to GT. Let's see how that translates into its wet and dry performance because often they're opposing qualities, but yeah, very good snow performance. The next group of tires, about a percent behind the GT, with the Goodyear, Conti and Hankook. Now, of the three, it was less than a percent splitting all three on lap time, and subjectively, they're all very similar. If anything, I'd say the Conti was the best overall in that it just felt a little bit more positive and direct on the front axle, but it didn't really translate into lap time. So all three of those tires, excellent in the snow for an all season tire. Next up was the summer optimized Michelin Cross Climber. Now this is a tire that isn't designed to have the best snow and ice performance. It's designed for summer conditions and in other testing, it's shown to be very good in the dry and wet. So to come fifth overall, good result for it. It felt really good, balanced like the Goodyear, a little bit, a little bit less grip everywhere. And it seemed to get upset a little bit more by the small patches of ice we've found on this snow handling circuit, but otherwise excellent. After the Michelin was the Nexon, again, Nothing particularly interesting to report. Might have felt a little bit more floaty on the front axle than the rest of the tires, and just had a little bit less grip everywhere overall, which is why it was about a percent behind the Michelin again. Then we come on to the Redstein, which is interestingly the only all season tire on test that has the asymmetric tread pattern. And directional tread patterns are common in all season and winter tires because they work really well in snow. So the Redstein did a good job. It wasn't the quickest tire on test, but it wasn't a disaster. And hopefully that asymmetric tread pattern will pay back some of the negativity here in the dry and wet testing. Finally, we finish up with the Bridgestone and Cooper. Now, the Bridgestone, again, just it was okay balanced. It just felt a little bit less grippy everywhere, and uh, it just struggled again like the Michelin with the icy bit. So it was a significant chunk behind the very best all-season tyres. And the Cooper, well, you can kind of see from the tread pattern where it suffers. It might have a blocky tread pattern, but it's not a very heavily siped tyre, and I think that's made it struggle a lot more than the others in the snow and ice. But again, like the other tyres, perhaps it will bring it back in the dry and wet. The winter and summer reference tyres. Now, the winter tyre, as you would imagine, absolute joy to drive on. The front end was even more precise than the GT. The back was stable and it just allowed you to position the car and it gave you a lot more ability to brake and turn. 
the lap time wasn't night and day ahead of the best all season tyres, but the confidence it gave you and the stability it gave you, you were driving the car less, if that makes sense. So it was just a better option all round for these conditions, but these are quite extreme wintry conditions. And the summer tyre, well, this new Goodyear Efficient Grip Performance 2 is a really, really strong summer tyre on snow compared to any other summer tyres I've tested in this kind of category. However, it still felt damn right dangerous compared to the best all season tyres and even the worst all season tyres. And I, I think that's the lesson to take away. The Cooper might have been 10, 15% behind the best all season tyre, but even the worst all season tyre is still 40% ahead of the summer tyre. And the summer tyre might get you going, but it's the braking and turning where you really, really find it difficult. Especially you find yourself just aiming at a snowbank, braking, thinking you've done it way in advance, and then just not stopping and sliding and sliding and sliding and always having an accident. So if you do want to stay safe in snow, summer tyres just isn't the option. And that's represented in the name, I guess. GT also aced the snow braking test with Continental and Goodyear close behind. The winter tyre again proved best overall with the summer tyre taking an alarming amount of distance to stop the car. The next stop is the south of France for wet and dry testing. As these are all season tyres, they're very likely to be used in a climate which sees quite a bit of rain, much like where I live in the UK. So their wet performance is one of the most important criteria. Now the slowest tyre on wet handling was the Cooper. Now this tyre was only about three seconds off the leader, but it struggled with grip or the balance of the car seemed to move around front to rear and it was quite a tricky tyre to drive. So in such a close group of tyres, in such a capable group of tyres, someone had to be last and it was the Cooper. The next up was the snow specialist, the GT. Now, while this tyre was still relatively slow compared to the pack, about a second faster than the Cooper, it was a completely different tyre to drive than the Cooper. Where the Cooper was a little bit unpredictable with the balance moving around, the GT was lovely and safe and balanced, and it felt really good laterally, it had a neutral balance, but it just seemed to lack grip, especially when trying to break down for the slower speed corners, which was backed up by the wet braking results I'll show you in a minute. Another half second ahead of the GT was the Nexon. Now this tire felt a lot like the GT. It was a nice tire to drive. It just didn't quite have as much grip as the best tires on test. And it seemed to lose the most time while braking and turning for the slow speed corners. The next tire was the Michelin. The tire felt the best. It had of the all season tires, it had the best most direct steering and felt the most positive on brakes. The tire just defaulted to a bit of an understeer behavior, which is very safe for the road, but it was frustrating because it felt like the tire had more time, but you just couldn't extract it on this short wet handling lap. So disappointing for Michelin in the six and the braking results back that up. However, we know the Cross Climate 2 has been announced and should be with us in Europe next year. So that's one to look out for. Fifth and four places were Redstein and Continental with almost the same times getting very close now. Interestingly, these two tires were the only tires that say that had an oversteer balance and that made them a little bit trickier to drive but both had good levels of grip, especially laterally. You could actually get quite a good time out of the tires, but perhaps they weren't the easiest tires to drive, but still good amounts of grip. The top three tires were all very close to each other. Four tenths separated them over the 70 second lap. Hankook was third place. Now the Hankook tire was a very pleasing tire to drive. It just felt easy. It felt it had really good lateral grip. And it just didn't give you any surprises. It was a kind of like safe blanket of a tire. I really enjoyed driving the Hankook. The Goodyear was second place at home. Now this tire, it felt good. It felt good all round, it had strong lateral grip, felt good on the brakes, didn't give you any surprises. If I was gonna criticize it in any way, it didn't give you, not that any, <laughs> not that any of the all season tires give you a huge amount of feedback through the steering wheel, but I would say Goodyear was one of the ones that were lacking maybe a bit more but the grip was there, the brakes was there, there was no problems aquaplaning. It was just a good all-round package. And the fastest tire on test, narrowly beating the Goodyear, was also the best tire on wet braking. It was the Bridgestone Weather Control A005. This tire just had a lovely neutral balance, didn't give you any surprises anywhere, and was nice and easy to place. It just does everything without any fuss and had great levels of grip, especially in the brake. So well done Bridgestone, you've produced a very good all season tire for wet performance. As for the summer and winter tire, well, the winter tire, very, very good. 
performance. Neutral, hint of understeer, was probably the woolliest through the steering wheel, but that's not surprising with the most amount of sipes and block movement. Uh, and didn't really like braking that much, but if it had been in the overall results, it would have placed eighth. As for the summer tire, well, after driving all those all season tires, it kind of felt like you just directly connected the car to the floor. It was so direct and so precise compared to these block movement sipes tires, apart from maybe the Michelin, it was a really joy to drive. Wet braking confirmed the Bridgestone's overall lead in the wet, with Hankook and Goodyear close behind. In fact, wet braking nicely mirrored the wet handling results, which isn't always the way with tire testing. Continental led the way in straight aquaplaning, with Hankook and Cooper closely following. Curved aquaplaning, which can be found on the Tire Reviews website, was a similar overall order, except Cooper was at the front this time. Now, let's get to dry testing. The air temperature is currently 30 degrees, and as I'm testing in the afternoon, the track is in the 40s. And while this isn't the ideal temperature to be dry handling all season tires, they are cooled all seasons, so they need to work in all conditions, and some of them will experience these conditions. Not only that, every single one of these sets of tires has had at least three flat out laps with understeer and oversteer and everything I do during a tire test, flat out baking heat and not a single one has had a huge noticeable drop in performance or has had any issues with the tread pattern starting to tear or anything like that. Sure, they all look a little bit worn at the end of the test, but they've all done really well, so I'm proud of them. Good job, all season tires. Now, the overall results are very, very close, closer than even wet handling. It's a 100 second lap here, and the slowest tire on test, which is again the Cooper, was only 2.4 seconds slower than the fastest. So you can see just how close the group is. The Cooper, it, you know, it felt fine to drive. Obviously not as quite as direct as a summer tire, but it didn't feel bad. It had a nice, safe understeer balance. It just didn't really have the grip anywhere. The Nexon was the next slowest. It felt a little bit worse than the Cooper. It felt a little bit harder to place, especially in the high speed turns like this. You were just kind of turning in a couple of times, wondering whether the car was gonna turn and when it was gonna attain its slip angle. But uh, again, very, very safe balance. A Little bit understeer primary. The GT finished seventh, feeling a lot like the Nexon, and the Continental finished sixth, feeling a lot like the GT. Now. You might notice a theme here of me saying all the tires felt very similar to each other. I pride myself in being able to tell the smallest differences between tires in all conditions. It's what got me into tire testing initially, that subjective handling. But these all season tires during the dry handling laps, when they're all being pushed to extreme, they all do feel quite close. Fifth and fourth place were Hankook and Bridgestone, posting essentially the same times. And you guessed it, feeling very, very similar to each other. A tiny bit ahead was Goodyear in third place. Now this tire did feel a little bit different for the rest. It was the first tire that moved the balance more towards a sort of neutral balance and the grip circle felt a little bit more even. So you could break and turn. It didn't give you any real big surprises. And it was a nice package, like fair play Goodyear for this. I would have liked maybe, again, a little bit more on the front end, but I can't really complain as it's an all-season tire that's proven to have very good snow performance. So it's looking to be quite a well-rounded all-season tire this good year. Second and first place posted the same lap time, and it was the Redstein and Michelin. And this is very interesting because both tires did it in very different ways. The Michelin felt probably the most like the summer tire on the brakes and turning. Like it felt like it just had a, a stiffer sidewall, a stronger construction, it was a more positive tire. But like in the wet, that slipped into understeer, which was a little bit frustrating. The Redstein kind of switched it around. It was a very quick turning tire at the front axle, so it felt nice and sporty but the rear didn't really feel like it could keep up with what the front wanted to do. So you felt yourself correcting and correcting and correcting again, especially in the high speed stuff. And then the braking wasn't quite even. It felt like the tire was a lot better laterally than it was in the brake. So you kind of slung it round the corner, dancing with the car on the limit, which was a lot of fun for an all season tire. Then you got to the braking point and you were a little bit, oh, that's going on a little bit. But the summer and winter tire, well, the winter tire finished last in time overall. And while it felt absolutely fine in the corners, it felt probably the worst on brakes. So that's where you feel like you were losing time on the winter tire. Just felt like it was smearing itself on the road. But again, that's not unusual because you've got so much block movement in the winter tire, which is designed to help in snow and particularly ice. And then the summer tire, well, 
like in the wet, it just felt like this Golf 1.4 TSI had been upgraded to a Golf GT. It felt like a little race car in comparison to all the all-season tyres. It felt like it had grown up the car. If you have a thing for driving enjoyment, if you like positive steering and positive braking, there just isn't an all-season tyre that can match a summer tyre in dry handling but they're not designed for that, so that's no huge surprise. The summer tyre was again best in dry braking, with the summer optimised Michelin a halfway point between the summer tyre and the rest of the all-season tyres. All that's left to test is noise and comfort levels. Noise and comfort is a very important test, and as usual, I've spent quite a lot of time on it. But as I've noted in dry handling, subjectively, these tyres are very, very similar, so it hasn't been the easiest process. All the all-season tyres are slightly more comfortable than the summer tyre which is a very comfortable summer tyre as summer tyres go. Only the Michelin, the Cross Climate, which is the most summer-like of the all-season tyres, proved to have slightly worse levels of comfort than the group. Of the group, there were three tyres that really stood out, and that was the Hankook, Nexon and Bridgestone. And interestingly, on the way to wet handling, I could tell I was on the Bridgestone before I'd got to the circuit, bearing in mind I'm testing blind, I don't know what tyres are fit to the car, because as I went over a bump on the way to the circuit, it just felt like it was the Bridgestone and I was like oh this must be the Bridgestone so in my notes I put I think this is the Bridgestone and then when I went back at the end of all the testing and looked at what tyre was what it was the Bridgestone so that's why I'm putting that at number one. The noise testing was again done by Goodyear and I'm really appreciative of them doing it because it's very complicated it took them two days of driving and three days of processing of the group again the Nexon and Bridgestone were very very good proving to be the nicest tyres to live with from a noise and comfort point of view but I'm going to put some of the data on the screen so you can pick through it yourself and look at all the decibel curves if you want the very basic stuff again go to the tyre reviews website and look at the test there the link will be in the description as for fuel use well recently Bridgestone have been killing it in rolling resistance testing and they have again here but they only got second place. First place went to the new Goodyear Vector 4 Season Generation 3, which is mighty impressive considering how well-rounded a tyre this seems to have been in all the tests so far, so well done Goodyear for that. The worst all-season tyre on test was the Cooper, nearly 20% down, and as a tyre contributes about 20% of the overall rolling resistance to a vehicle, that's 20% of 20% for roughly for extra fuel use, so it's significant over a tyre's life. So, before I start the conclusion, there's a few bits of housekeeping I want to talk about in advance to preempt any questions you might have. Firstly, if you're wondering why I haven't tested any tyres that were released or updated this year, that's because I started ordering tyres for this in November 2019, started testing in February 2020, and it was meant to be finished in March 2020, but as we all know, the world's got delayed. Secondly, I want to put a huge thanks out to Goodyear again for fitting me in into their French facility in Miraval. They didn't have to fit me in and demand is obviously sky high since the world's reopened. So thanks once again to Goodyear for letting me run this test on my own in their facilities. It's a really big help, so thank you so much. Thirdly, I've had lots of people on previous videos asking if I test blind. As I do for a lot of my tests where I don't have to physically fit the wheels myself, I do test blind. And if you're a little bit confused, that doesn't mean I'm literally blindfolded driving around a track. That wouldn't be much good for anyone. What it means is I don't know what tires are on the car while I'm testing. And that is the case for everything I've done here in France. So Goodyear have even gone to the lengths of covering the wheels before I get in the car, just in case I wanted to take a sneak peek. Not that I would, but it's important you know that when I'm testing tires and taking notes, all I know is a sequence number. I don't actually know what tire I'm driving on. And lastly, as my audience is worldwide, I'm gonna do what I think is a world's first and give two different sets of results. The first set of results will be the traditional all season score weighting. And that means dry and snow performance will have an equal level in the overall results and then wet just a little bit more. This is the result you should look at if you're in a climate that gets proper all season. So you get snow in the winter, you get sun in the summer, you get wet in the autumn. The second set of results is going to be for people like me who live somewhere in like the south of the UK where you see snow once every three years. And when you do see snow, you just want a tyre that gets you home that's better than a summer tyre. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the snow section of the score weighting right down to 5%. Then I'm going to bump up dry and wet in equal percentages which means we'll be looking at a set of results which is more useful for someone who lives in London. In ninth place is this, it's the Cooper Discoverer all season. Now, this was by no means a bad tire, I only finished 7% overall off the best, but it didn't really excel in any of the tests, struggled in the snow, struggled in the wet, and while it was good in dry braking and aquaplaning, it just wasn't up to the ability of the rest. 
Eighth place overall went to the Vredstein Quadtrack Pro. Now, as the only asymmetric tire on test, this has been a bit of an interesting test because it's had a quirky set of results. It excelled in dry handling, but really struggled in dry braking. It was mid-pack for the wet test, but struggled in aquaplaning. And it was the quietest on the smooth surface, but the noisiest on the rough surface. So really interesting tire, perhaps the all season tire for track days because it was so much fun on the dry handling track. But for the rest of the year, there were better tires in this group. Seventh place went to this, the Nexon M Blue 4 season. And while it was a quiet and comfortable tire, it didn't really excel in any of the grip tests. It's another tire that's very well priced, but there are better tires in this test. Sixth place went to the quickly improving GT with their GT all season. Now this tire was the snow king. It felt the most like a winter tire in the snow, but it did struggle in the wet test. So maybe this is the all season tire you want to think about if you're on a budget because it's a very well priced tire and you live in a climate that sees a lot of snow. Probably not as suited for a climate like the south of the UK where it's mostly dry and wet running, but excellent in the snow. Fifth place went to this, the Michelin Cross Climate Plus. As always, this tire felt excellent in the dry and wet subjectively with direct steering and a really good brake pedal. And it works pretty well in snow, so that dispels the myth that this tire doesn't work in snowy conditions. However, after a string of sixth places in the wet, it just wasn't up to the rest of the group in its wet performance. I know the Michelin Cross Climate 2 has been announced. It's in North America only at the moment, but should be with us in Europe next year. So I'm mega excited to test that. Subscribe for that if you haven't already. Bridgestone finished a solid fourth with the Weather Control A005. Now this tire wasn't the greatest in the snow, but it excelled in the dry and particularly the wet. Plus it had very low rolling resistance and it was a really nice, quiet and comfortable tire to drive on. Really, really impressed with this tire. And the A005 Evo is already to market. That's come out this year. So I'm mega excited about testing that in next year's all season tire test. See if it can build on where this is lacking and that's snow performance. Right, now we're at the top three. Things are getting very close overall. In third place is this, the Continental All Season Contact. Now, this is a tire that didn't really jump out at me at any point in testing. At no point did I leave any notes in my testing notes against the secret numbers that this tire was remarkable. However, it just did everything well, which is what an all season tire should do. It's such a well-rounded tire, really impressive package from Continental. So well done Continental for third place, highly recommended. Hankook will be very pleased with the second place for the Kinergy 4S. Now, like the Continental, this tire didn't actually win a single test, but it was second, third, fourth, fifth. It was there or thereabouts in every single test, meaning it's just one of the most rounded tires on test. It has no real drawbacks. It's such an incredible piece of technology from Korea. Hankook should be really proud with this. Mega impressive tire. I really enjoyed driving on it. it just, just a fantastic breadth of ability, which all season tires should have. And by a narrow margin, we have the winner, which is the newest tire on test. It's the Goodyear Vector 4 Season Generation 3. Like the other top tires, it had no faults. In fact, looking at how well this tire did in all the testing, it's amazing one tire can do everything so well. It was the second best overall in snow. It was top three in wet. It was really good on dry handling. It had the lowest rolling resistance. It was quite uncomfortable. The fact this one tire can do so many things well really, really does shout out just how much work the Goodyear engineers have put in upgrading the already excellent Goodyear Vector 4 season generation 2. So well done Goodyear, you should be really proud of this tire you've made. It's excellent in pretty much every category. So as I touched upon at the start of the conclusion, what if you live in a climate that doesn't actually get much snow, you want that safety net of an all season tire to get you home safely when it does snow, but your focus should be on dry and wet performance. Well, if you've watched this video from the start, you're not going to be surprised, it's this. The Bridgestone Weather Control A005 was pretty much unrivaled in the dry and wet. So this is the tire for climates like the south of the UK where you're not gonna see much snow ever. This is the tire you should be thinking about. Hankook remains second and Goodyear slides down to third with the dry specialist Michelin in fourth. As for the summer and winter tire, well, both these tires did what we expected really. The winter tire was amazing in the snow, was okay in the wet but struggled in the dry but we have been testing at over 40 degrees track temperature so the winter compound is going to struggle a little bit more than the all season compound and the summer tire well that was the best in the dry and wet it had the best sense of driving enjoyment you can't rival an unsiped tire they just you don't get feedback like this from any all season tire even the cross climb it's a step down but you just shouldn't be using a summer tire in snowy conditions and if you're in a climate that sees very hot summers or very cold winters a summer and winter tire is still the safest way of motoring year round. All season tires are very good for the kind of milder winter summer seasons, 
but they don't replace a summer and winter tyre if you want the optimum safety for year-round motoring. Well, that concludes the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a long old test. Thank you once again to Goodyear. If you've got any questions, please ask below. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe and hit that bell icon. We've got a lot of good winter stuff coming, including four-wheel drive and all-season tyres versus two-wheel drive and winter tyres, which is going to reign supreme. If you've watched this video, you've probably got a good idea, but I'm doing both a European and an American version, which will be mega exciting. And as always, safe motoring.